Where are you right now? At school? Or maybe at home? Seems like an easy thing, but do you know where you really are on the Earth? Let's see if we can find out. Here you are sitting at your desk at school. Let's imagine we can look down on you from the ceiling. Now let's float up right through the ceiling until we can see the whole school and playground. If we go up a little higher, we see some nearby buildings and stores that you've probably noticed on your way to school. This is your neighborhood. You and your school are part of this neighborhood. As we continue rising up, other neighborhoods become visible. These neighborhoods are made up of houses, stores, parks, and of course, schools. And together, they make up our town. The higher we go, the more we see. Now we can see some of the towns that are only a short car or bus ride away. Maybe your school's basketball team plays against them. Or there's a shopping mall that your parents take you to. These towns make up your community. Our community is one of many that make up our state, which is one of 50 that make up our country. Our country is on a continent, or a huge piece of land called North America, which is part of the planet, the Earth. Because the world is so big and made up of so many different places, geographers have invented tools to make it easier to look at the world. The most important of these tools are maps and globes. Maps and globes can help geographers and you to see the world without ever leaving home. This is a photograph of the Earth taken from a satellite orbiting in space. As you can see, looking at a globe it's kind of like looking at the Earth from space. A globe is a model or small copy of the Earth. Like the Earth, a globe is round. At the top of the globe, you can see the North Pole. The North Pole is the northernmost place on the Earth. At the opposite end of the globe is the South Pole. The South Pole is the southernmost place on the Earth. Halfway in between the two poles is an imaginary line that goes all the way around the Earth. This line is called the equator. It divides the Earth into two halves, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. The word hemisphere means half a sphere. A sphere is a round object, like a ball, or in this case, the Earth. Each hemisphere, then, is half the Earth. A map is a flat drawing of the Earth, or part of the Earth. Since the Earth is round, not flat, a globe is a more accurate way to show the Earth. But maps are useful, too. Maps are easier to carry than globes. Also, a map can show you the whole world at once. With a globe, you can only see one side at a time. Maps contain a lot of information to help you use them. The title tells you what the map is about. This might include the names of the areas shown and the type of map. What is a grid? A grid is the pattern caused by the crossing of horizontal and vertical lines. On a city map, a grid can be the pattern made by the crossing of streets. Some maps have a grid which has been specially drawn to make it easier to find places on that map. In these cases, the spaces between the lines will be marked with letters along one edge and numbers along another edge. Places are located by finding the square identified by a letter and number, such as B2. Distance. Maps are drawing which reduce the entire world or a part of it to fit on a sheet of paper. It can only be possible when a small distance on paper represents a large distance on the ground. Therefore, a scale is chosen for this purpose. 
scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and distance shown on the map for example the distance between your school and your home is 10 km if you show this 10 km distance by 2 cm on a map it means 1 cm on the map will show 5 km on the ground the scale of your drawing will be 1 cm is equal to 5 km thus scale is very important in any map if you know the scale you will be able to calculate the distance between any two places on a map Direction. Most maps contain an arrow mark with the letter N at the upper right hand corner. This arrow indicates the north direction. There are four major directions. North, South, East and West. They are called cardinal points. Other four intermediate directions are Northeast, Southeast, Southwest and northwest we can find out the direction of a place with the help of compass compass is an instrument used to find out main directions it has a magnetic field which always points towards north south direction symbol objects like buildings, roads, petrol pumps, etc. are shown by using symbols such as letters, objects, color, etc. These symbols give a lot of information in a limited space. With the use of these symbols, maps can be drawn easily and are simple to read. Maps have a universal language that can be understood by all. There is an international agreement regarding the use of these symbols. These are called conventional symbols. Some of the conventional symbols are How are colors used on maps? Colors are used in different ways on different types of maps. On a road map, colors are used to represent different kinds of roads or different features such as parks, historic sites, or urban areas. Political maps use colors to define political divisions such as countries, states, or provinces. Physical maps use colors to show how high the land is above sea level. Other types of maps will use colors for other purposes.